The next leg of the journey here is from Amherst, Nova Scotia, down to Truro. Not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but sounds good enough. I just felt like making some miles again towards Halifax, a little bit at a time each day, and get there by Thursday. So, uh, yeah, the heat has just been unbearable, like to sit in any one place for too long. So we just get back on the road and get the wind through the windows and it's all right. But uh, I never expected that the heat would be such a big enemy to me on this trip. But, like, I worked out in the heat for years and years, just drinking water all day, but doing heavy labor. And for some reason, I'm learning now that just hanging out in the heat without having a task to set your mind to is not as easy. It was a lot easier when I was working and I knew what I had to do and... The heat was just a hindrance to it. But now, uh, on this trip, I kind of wake up. A lot of days not being exactly sure what I want to do. And the heat makes it hard to sit and think about it. makes it hard to think in general. So, I just get on the road where thinking is limited to keep it between the mustard and the mayo and just not not have to think too hard just straight on ahead keep checking the mirrors but i feel bad that there's so many things along the way that i'm probably missing the bay of fundy is right next to me and i haven't even gone over to see the the shore and or the tide so when i got to truro I ended up checking out a spot called uh, the Fundy Tidal Interpretive Center, which was more or less just a little walkway beside an inlet with a, a half bridge going out into the water. I, I should have got video of it, but I was too focused on keeping the cat close to me. She was straying towards the edge a little closer than I was comfortable with. But, um, so the Bay of Fundy has the highest tides in the world, or the, the biggest motion of the tide, I would say, I guess. So, the, the amount of water that moves in and out is just beyond comprehension. Is billions of liters, gallons, whatever, units don't matter at that scale. It is the full mass of the ocean moving in and out every 12 hours of the day. They have, I don't understand tides well enough to be explaining this, but I'll try to explain it the best I can. Uh, it comes in and goes out twice a day, so it's like a six-hour cycle. And when I showed up, it was on its way out, so there was just a mass of water flowing down the river out into the ocean the way it's supposed to be with great big high muddy banks along all of it and it's that bright red mud that i thought was so unique to pei but i guess they got it here on the shores too but uh, the amount of water that comes in and goes out every day is just incredible so I watched that for a little bit as it went out. I would have liked to have seen it come in because apparently, yeah, the river flows backwards twice a day and it fills up all the little inlets and streams and they're all, they're all way deeper than they would be if they were just a regular stream because so much flow going back and forth so much instead of just a one-way flow like you would normally get so i checked out that fundy tidal place for 
a little bit with the kitty and then just got right back on the road and headed off towards Halifax. Nothing really in between the two that I could think of or find out to check out. Um, right before I got on the highway, there was a rest stop with a theme park all to do with the mastodons. It must must have been fossils found around here, I guess, for them to do that. I hope, anyways. It's not just a gimmick. But, yeah, the big statue of a woolly mammoth and, well, I don't know if a mastodon is the same thing as a woolly mammoth or not, but stick by it. So, those kind of roadside attraction places are neat. The book I was just reading lately had a little bit about how there's, there's power in those kind of places, almost the way that religious sites have, but in sort of a cheap knockoff sort of way. But there's still... They're places that people go out of their way to visit and see, and there's there's energy in places like that. So I didn't realize, going into Halifax, that I took the wrong route and I ended up in Dartmouth, which is the other side of a great big chunk of water. So I ended up having to take another toll bridge, this one much cheaper than the PEI bridge. I think it was only a buck fifty to go from Dartmouth over to Halifax. And then when I got on the right side of the water, I just um, found a little spot to camp called the Frog Pond Park. I got a nice parking lot where, depending on which side of it, I can find a little bit of shade. And uh, let the kitty run around a little bit there, and then slept the night and woke up and went into downtown Halifax and played a little Thursday afternoon sidewalk set. Wasn't really a good time for it, and I don't think I picked a very good spot. The streets were really busy, lots of big trucks, so lots of noise for me to have to make myself heard above but I got a few smiles from a few people and oh there were these cool tour boat things driving around the streets I saw they got a lot of tour buses going around and you could hear the loudspeaker someone telling stories about Halifax and if I was more of a tourist I might hop on one of those but I like to read things up for myself and just walk around and drive around to see the sights. But it is beautiful here in Halifax. A lot of history in this city. I need to get up and walk around this big green area, the, the Citadel. It was too hot, too direct sunlight for me to stop there when I passed it here after playing a little set. But I want to get up and see what's on top of there. The remains of an old fort, I'm pretty sure. So after playing that set, I just went back to the Frog Pond Park to catch some shade, hang out with the breeze through the windows, and there's lots of people come by walking their dogs and stuff, but the only people who come over to talk to me are interested and think it's cool what I'm up to, so... I didn't get kicked out last night, so I figure I'll stay here again tonight, and Friday, tomorrow, I'll see if I can find a better spot to play some music. There's a jazz fest going on in the city here, so down by the harbor front, there's lots of music going that I don't like to step on the toes of organized stuff, so I'll leave that to be, and maybe I'll find a little little spot of the downtown that doesn't have so many transport trucks flying through it and i'll play a few more little shows try to scrape up some change to keep the kitty fed and keep food in my belly and gas in my tank there's a little scrap of a song that i've been kicking around in my head goes uh, 
As long as I got food in my bowl and my wheels can roll, I'm doing fine. Every day I get a little further down the line. Something like that. And yeah, as long as I can keep me and the kitty fed and I have gas money to get down the road, I'm doing all right. This Frog Pond Park is pretty nice. It's not too far out of Halifax. Let the kitty get out and climb around on the rocks and run around and she's gotten she's getting so active and strong and compared to two weeks ago when I found her I can't believe the change. Eating a full can of food along with some dry food every day but still not drinking enough water. I guess cats have that problem, and it's just a little dish of lukewarm water. When I've got ice in the cooler, I guess I can cool it off for a little, but it's not that appetizing. But she seems to be doing good in the heat. Whenever I find a good spot to park, I make sure there's a breeze, and I open up the windows. And It's nice that... Uh, community around here seems pretty honest. I've been able to leave the back window of the camper right open so she gets air and nobody messing with my truck while I'm away from it. Yeah, we're doing all right here out on the east coast. The breeze off the water makes the heat bearable better than, better than it was inland. And there's some ducks in this frog pond that have no fear at all. I walked right up to them when they were on shore and they weren't spooked at all. It's pretty neat. <laughs> 